we are considered in the multi -char charter coalition as a very um, annoying party and that's because we we are providing fresh new ideas and we are saying um, this is how things can be done this is the solution you need to bring um, things forward this is fascinating to say that 70 percent of our problems can be solved by just closing the borders i hope or disagree there's nothing wrong with receiving funding and, and funders um, people who have money, people who have spare change will fund political parties because they like the political party, they like the policies, they like the venue. Rise wants to break away from the old and that's why we aren't a breakaway party. Spread the fire. Welcome to the SMWX election debate series. This is our second debate. And today we are joined by two representatives from two political parties that are contesting in the national and provincial elections in 2024. So on my left, we have, and your right, Ifan Mangera, the Rise Mzansi National Leadership Collective member. And on my right, which I assume is your left, is Sianda Makubo, who is the Action SA Ehoruleni leader. Gentlemen, welcome. Thank you for having us. So it's, it's great that you're here. And I think one of the things that we've wanted to see more in South Africa is honest debate about the value propositions that different political parties have, the ideologies that are framing their value propositions, what they bring to the table. And often in the media landscape, we don't have a lot of quality debate and it affects the voters' decision making. It affects the voters' decision-making. So I have a debate background. I don't know if any of you have been aware of that, but I love debate and the potential that it has for exposing contradictions, but also for bringing to light and really sharpening the ideas and presentations that everyone has. I think as party leaders, you get an opportunity to sharpen your arguments, sharpen your thoughts, to hear contrasting ideas, to hear contrasting views. And why I think this matters is because I think the state of South Africa right now is one of crisis. If you look at the unemployment data which just came out, it indicates that youth unemployment is consistently going up and some communities have been adversely affected more than others and those people will be asking relatives of those people will be asking young people who have to support them and say who's going to help me help my nephew who's going to help me help uh, people like Asi? there are so many issues with substance abuse with the uh, quality of life in South Africa, whether it's healthcare, security, people are afraid to run on the streets, people are afraid to even sleep without having burglar bars, all kinds of security companies protecting them, people are buying safety cameras, they're buying guns out of fear of just being able to make it to the morning. So I think there's a lot that is happening, cost of living. If you look at the cost of living in the last two years, post pandemic, people are not making ends meet. And if you speak to middle class, you speak to poor South Africans, they're saying the same thing, that they're not making ends meet. And it's important for those people, one, to hear what the parties have to offer, but two, for them to get enthusiastic about this election. There's still a very big crisis of voter turnout and voter apathy, particularly in that 20 to 30 demographic. Sometimes I think, you know, everyone talks about the 18 and the 19 year olds. And I think maybe you're not going to get the 18 or 19 year olds. But what about the guy who's 26? What about the lady who's 27? What about the person who is sending money home every month, working at the call center and worried about how to make ends meet? We are not there yet at the point at which we can actually say we know that they are excited about this election. So thank you so much for availing yourselves. So the way it's going to work is that I'm going to give you the floor. And we're just going to start with you, Ifan, and give you three minutes to say to South Africa, why should they pick Rise Mzansi? So without much ado, thanks so much. Over to you. Thanks so much, Jamie. And also, I agree. I think we need to build this democracy from the tatters that it's in. It requires a healthy engagement. It requires more debate. Rise Mzansi has built itself as a political alternative that is a, aligned to a social democratic outline and an ideological base, but that focuses on being a political movement that speaks about and engages and works with and for the people. Um, since we have launched last year, uh, we've engaged hundreds of communities and individuals and professional circles, um, sectoral circles to ensure that the voices of South Africans are heard in 
a new form of politics. And this has resulted in us and our fast paced growth in the appetite South Africans have for wanting something new and something that serves the interest of the broad populace rather than party politics alone. Um, in doing so, we've also been quite clear that we also have to solve for the leadership crisis that this country is in and get the best to lead. Uh, leaders who come from civil society, religious organizations, NGOs, social movements, and so on, are the people who initiated the process to build rise. And I've been part of that founding committee. I come from civil society and the leaders of RISE also come from various sectors of society. You have Fuyisa Ramokhopa, Songhezo Zibi, you have people like Ntate Ishma Kubela. As these names are people who come with varied experience, but who come with a, a, a wealth of knowledge and a desire to see South Africa thrive and be part of the global nations uh, that, that really exist to take forward South Africans uh, out of the mess that we are in. The alternative that we're providing to South Africa is about justice, solidarity, equality. It's about making sure that we fundamentally shift the way politics is done, therefore having integrity and ensuring that South Africans are the ones who lead the change. So part of that, and I'll end on this point, is that we're saying we need a new type of politics. It has to be about systemic change, but the only way we can push for that change and create more forms of direct democracy is that we start shaping and contesting for power and not, not, not merely being on the outside of society watching in and screaming in. We have to be the ones who lead it from the inside. Thanks. Thanks so much for that opening. Over to you, Sianda. What, why Action SA? No, certainly. Thank you very much for having us. Um, Action SA was founded at the backdrop of the People's Dialogue. And this follows um, the resignation of the then mayor, Herman Mashaba, who had then served the city of Johannesburg as executive mayor for about three years. And there was a request from millions of South Africans requesting and asking Mr. Mashaba not to leave the political scene. He had provided practical solutions to the city of Johannesburg. He had run a city on a good, tight um, governing um, system. And therefore, he, he said, look, I can't just start a political party. I need to understand that, um, you know, there is a need for a political party. There is a need for something new to provide solutions to fix South Africa. And therefore, in 2020, on the height of COVID, uh, we started consultations in what we call the People's Dialogue. And uh, close to about 3 million South Africans gave us the mandate to establish a political party that will put South Africans first. And we established Action SA um, in 2020 of August and as a platform um, to address some of the issues that South Africans are facing. And one of the one of the things that we're putting forward as Action SA is the rule of law. South Africa remains a lawless country and we are of the view that um, with, with, with the absence of the rule of law, South Africa becomes a crisis. It is chaotic and, and we want to put that forward. Number two, we want a political party that will put South Africans first and no one lost. Um, it, for a number of years and number of decades, we have had a government that has neglected uh, South Africans from all walks of life. And we want that uh, agenda of South Africans first to be put on the table. We want a political party that will put uh, good um, um, people who come from different backgrounds, who give experience and skills onto the table um, to, to provide solutions for South Africa. I have a background in policy and research. I have a background in communications. I was an official in the city of Johannesburg and I've joined Action SA to be part and parcel of contributing to fixing South Africa. Another thing that we want to look at is social justice. We are of the view that um, from the past 30 years, there have been people who have been left behind by um, the corrupt ANC government. We call them Amasela National Congress, rightly so, because they've taken away opportunities from rightly deserving South Africans. We also want to address um, the inefficiencies within um, SOEs and government um, institutions. And Action SA has a blueprint for that. We have adopted policies in our policy conference and we're providing South Africans with solutions. No one wants to hear ideologies and theories. People want to know what solutions a party like Action SA has to provide on the table. And that is to fix South Africa. Well, thank you so much. This is a debate. So now we're getting to the debate part. We're going to give each side an opportunity to respond um, to the presentation that has been made 
um, and if one you'll have the first chance because obviously you just spoke um, to respond and then you will get a chance as well to respond to the offering because if a South African say, is saying between rise and action they say those are my two options but I, I can't decide what would you say in, in, in defense of your side of the case and also as a critique because this is a debate of action essay. Absolutely. So I'm going to begin with what he ended with, and that's about the ideology and the theories of change. I think it's important that South Africans understand the value system that guides a political party, because unfortunately, when it's just on a populist rhetoric, you can shift today with the one value to another value as the political convenience emerges. And that's what happened. I mean, Mashaba was a mayor in the city when uh, there was a whole mess up with the EFF um, when they had had partnered. And it was because of this convenience that there's a big mess now in the city, in, in Joburg South, where I live, where land was not properly distributed. And you now have people living in squalor as a result of, and you have more and more burden on the state and the functions of the city. Um, so it's important to have ideology because it allows you to root yourself. And that's why I led that we are social democratic and that allows us to keep a framing of what we think is the, the necessary changes that are needed. I want to add on to the point about essay first, because I think this idea that it can just be a question of foreign nationals that's the priority problem is incorrect. We have set out in our manifesto, for example, immigration and managing immigration as, the, as, as, a, as an important thing, but it can't be the only thing that drives, drives change and economic growth. We have to look at how we prioritize building the economy so that more and more people, in fact, even people from abroad can come in and invest and participate in this economy. Um, unfortunately, uh, I don't think that Action SA is on a good footing when it, when it comes to um, their partners, because again, part of this convenience is that you going into power for the sake of unseating the ANC. That is not good enough. We've not provided South Africans with an alternative vision for where this country should go and how we should get there. And therefore, RISE has provided the third way, a way that says we're not going to be in a multi-party charter or moonshot pact for the purpose of just ridding the ANC. It has to be go beyond that where um, we need to look at the, 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 the entire vision of a generation from now and that can't just be on the basis that you will work with con the convenient partners. And I say this because, again, to the values and what you stand for, it's good to say social justice, but your social justice is not the other party's social justice that you're in bed with. And therefore, a huge cause of concern for South Africans is instability. And that's what we're seeing across all municipalities in which Action SA has been part and parcel of. Um, in Swane, you, we have currently still uh, massive issues, issues of water, issues of, of the fact that we can't um, get refuse done properly. All of these things are a result of an unstable or instable government and coalitions who are there for the purposes of, of who gets what piece of the pie rather than what service do they provide to the people. Mm. Thank you so much. Over to you without further ado. No, no, no. Thank you very much. Um, Busiso in Zagani doesn't care what a social democrat is. Busiso in Zagani will go to bed um, hungry with load shedding, with no water running. Doesn't care what theory and ideology means to them. Busiso wants to know what the practical solutions are to fix in South Africa. And Action SA is putting that forward. Um, we are described uh, by political pundits and analysts as a center-right party. That is the opinion that they have. Um, we have values as a party. The founding values of Action SA are very clear from the People's Dialogue, and that emanates from the consultations and the conversations we would have had with normal South Africans on the street. Um, so we do have value systems in the party, embedded in the party. So we're not going to um, accept and to be mentioned or branded as a populist party. Definitely not. We're a party that believes in the rule of law and will stick to principle. And one of the reasons why um, Ifan brings the issue of the instability of coalitions um, and it, this um, obviously spills into the multi-party charter for South Africa. Action SA was one of the parties that jetted off to Germany where we went to study how coalitions work. And one of the values and the principles of coalitions is that you need to inform your electorate before elections, before you go to an election. Put your cards on the table that these are the parties I've identified, these are the parties I have similar values to, and these are the parties I can work with. 
we all agree that the problems um, that are currently facing South Africans is the ANC. And any party that's willing to talk to the ANC or work with the ANC is part of the problem. And that's particularly what we're seeing in, in municipalities such as the city of Ekuruleni, Eteguini, Kabeja, and Johannesburg, where parties like the EFF have given the, the ANC a further mandate to govern those cities through the back door when the electorate was clear that they don't want the ANC in the polls. So we have the view that the multi-party charter is actually an essay putting their cards on the table, informing the electorate, this is who we are, these are the values that we have identified these parties to work with. And actually an essay is, is very clear on that. On, on, on the issue of, of putting South Africans first, we have the view that illegal migration is a huge problem in South Africa. There was a study conducted by the VETS um, Research Center um, which, which uh, some of the results in the research conducted there was that if you can close your borders, if you can have strong borders, you would solve 70% of South Africa's problems just by closing your borders. We need to know who's in the country. We need to plan. If you want to plan to provide services and you want to have good infrastructure and you want to maintain your infrastructure and have a good solid budget, you need to know who's in the country, how many people in the country, who are these people? Are they unemployed or not? Do they need health services or not? Do they need safety and security? And so Action SA is saying, if you close the borders and have tight borders and put South Africans forward, you'll have a prosperous South Africa. And, and, and we're, we're apologetic about that. Um, patriotism needs to come back in this country so that we start seeing citizens being proud of being South Africans. And you'll start seeing an involved citizenry that's involved in, in, with building their own country. All right, great. There's another opportunity that we're going to give you guys to respond to each other before we move to the open round where I ask you questions, right? So if I'm, you've got three minutes as well to respond, uh, strengthen your arguments uh, that you made in your first uh, responses, and then you'll get another three minutes. So um, over to you. Thank you. Um, I'll begin on the point of practical solutions. Now, RISE has launched a manifesto since the beginning, in fact, RISE has produced discussion documents, we've produced um, topical, um, sectoral specific uh, papers in which people could engage and we can develop well-meaning solutions that cover the issues properly. Unfortunately, I can't say the same for Action SA in, in as far as their policy formation has gone. On the issue of hunger that's been raised, I'm not, I don't disagree with you. People are hungry. The majority of this country is hungry. But that has to form part and parcel of the value system and the principles you yourself has, has said you stand by. And that's why ideology is important, but it's not all that it's important on. Um, hunger is a, pro, is, 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 a, is a primary challenge, and that's why it's, in fact, our most urgent pressing issue as Rise Mzanzi. This is fascinating to say that 70% of our problems can be solved by just closing the borders. I hope disagree. I think, yes, we need to ensure better management of this immigration system 100%. There's an entire section in our manifesto that speaks about this. But for us to actually get this economy going, we need to fix state-owned entities like ESCOM, Transnet. We need to actually in, in, invest heavily in education, in healthcare. And while the cheap shot and scapegoating of, of foreign nationals is, continues to happen with some of our parties, I disagree that that is, the out, that is the solutions to the problems we have. On the side of coalitions, it is convenient once again, very convenient to say that you align with those parties because some of those same parties uh, wholeheartedly stand against the, the queer community. They wholeheartedly believe in alternative pro policies and, and, and values that you stand in. And that's the problem, is you can't go into a coalition before an election uh, has happened. The electorate must decide and thereafter you can formulate based on what, who you think best suits and fit, fits that coalition. Um, I, I think there's a bigger process to, to, be hap to, to have had and that's why RISE deliberately started from the grassroots uh, upwards. And we have provided an option to South Africans who said we still don't feel like there's an alternative in the space, whether it's Action SA or any of the other newcomers in the last few years they still didn't have the confidence in saying, these are the leaders who we think represent us and are part and parcel of us on a daily life. And therefore, RISE has taken the deliberate decision to make sure we build from the ground up. And that's why for the people by the people is an important slogan because it's about establishing day-to-day -day engagement and active citizenry, like you said, on the ground so that leaders are there nonstop 
and that we're not doing this immediately just for this election, but for the long-term change of South Africa so that we can build an equal, safe, prosperous and, 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 and just society in one generation. Over to you, Sianda. Yeah, I mean, if you look at um, Rise Mzansi's and I'd looked through their policies, I mean, as, as a politician myself, it's very important that you stay informed. I look through their um, manifesto. Um, you'd think that Rise Mzansi is contesting local government elections, to be quite frankly. Um, I would have advised them that they look into the 2026 local government elections and not contest these elections. We are talking about national government. We're talking about policy framework. We're talking about um, um, issues that have to deal with uh, foreign affairs, issues that have to do with the economy at that level. And um, Rise Science is not providing that to their manifesto. Um, they are providing something, that I, I think, um, I mean, Efran rightly uh, well says that they've consulted grassroots levels. We have representatives in Action SA, we, con we contested local government elections um, after we were formed and we were represented in about six municipalities across the country. And after only contesting in only those six municipalities, we were the fifth largest party in the country. And imagine if Action SA contested all um, elections throughout the country, number what we would have been throughout the country. So we, we have a strong mandate. We continue to have a strong mandate. We rallied up about 5,000 delegates at our policy conference last year, where we are represented in 43% of the wards in the country. We continue to be launching branches across the country. We, are, we were once the fastest growing party at some point in the country, and we continue to maintain that. Um, so, so Action SA does have a mandate. We, we, we truly speak for the normal South African. We are cross and we are diverse in all um, spheres of society. And, and, and we're very proud of some of the work that we have done. Um, on coalition partners, I think once again, it's very important to, for the electorate to be informed of, what, of the eventuality of voting for a particular party. And from Ifran's submissions, it's very clear that they are most likely to be aligned with the ANC post the national government elections. Um, because then if we isolate the ANC and you say they're part of the problem and that we isolate the EFF to say that they are more than willing to sponsor as they've done in local government um, support for the ANC, um, then it's very clear that Raizam Zansi would, would give away your votes to the ANC to continue to, to govern this country when we have identified ANC to be the sole problem of this country's collapse. Um, so it's, it's, it's very interesting um, submissions from, 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 from all of that, but Action SA remains a very inclusive open party, a very dynamic party, a very diverse party at that. We support gay rights. We, we, are, we, are, we are social justice um, um, champions. We, have, we also have people from different um, 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 industries, such as NGOs, people who have come from different backgrounds, who have come together to Action SA to contribute to fixing South Africa. And we're of the view that um, we have the best, best platform and the best policies to offer that solution. Well, thanks. I'm, I'm just going to ask um, our timekeeper just to set a two minute timer. I know we're, we're doing um, the open questions now, but I'm going to ask you the same questions and you'll have up to two minutes to respond so that we, we, we keep the time fair. So the first question I'm going to ask, and I'm, I'm going to direct it to you, Sianna, because Ifana has been getting a lot of the first um, stabs, is you say that, um, who, who was the gentleman who you said? You said Spusiso doesn't yes. care about, you My know. <laughs> uh, yes, I was about to say Spusiso, <laughs> Tinsualo, Tiniko. Yeah, yeah. We're getting a lot of names um, this month. You say he doesn't care about ideology, but sometimes ideology does inform um, the policy preference or the policy mix of a political organization and the kind of things that it will advance vote for in committees um, and in the National Assembly. So uh, the leader of Action SA, Herman Mashaba, is known to have a capital capitalist ideology. And that does come with its own policy preferences. So can you address what kind of an economic model has Action SA chosen as the preferred economic model for South Africa, and how does that address market failures such as um, expensive rent, uh, low minimum wage? How do you deal with those issues from your framework as Action SA? Sure. So we be we believe in inclusive economic policy, and um, we are of the view that the private sector does have a role to play um, in moving South Africa forward. That government has a role to play to regulate the activity of business. Uh, we obviously believe um, um, 
a, a mixed economy should be something that should be offered to South Africa. We don't believe in a total welfare state. We believe that um, those who are unable to make it through society must be assisted, must be adequately be provided with what they need um, to make it to South Africa. So we have the view that um, business must flourish in order for South Africa to move forward. And that government should play that role of, of, of um, regulating that. And obviously, sometimes it becomes difficult to um, separate the leader from, from the party, the leader's background and all of that. But there have been instances where we've disagreed fundamentally with um, Herman Mashaba. An example is the death penalty. I mean, he was strong um, with the death penalty. And we went to a policy conference and we said, no, Mr. President, we don't agree with this. He was, for instance, um, in a disagreement with um, BRICS. We said, no, Mr. President, we don't agree. We should remain in BRICS because international organizations and international treaties such as BRICS um, only offer contribution to society. So when you sell ideas to Sbusiso, Sbusiso wants to know what is Action SA, what are the values of Action SA, what are the solutions you're providing for me? Sbusiso doesn't care that political analysts think to a center-right party. Sbusiso wants to know those solutions. All right, great. Thanks. Thanks so much. So let me come to you, Ifan, and also ask you a similar question. As social democrats, um, led by a party who's a, who has been an editor of a business uh, publication, what does that mean for the economic uh, policy that you are bringing? And if we can, let's try to make it tangible, because I am going to ask a follow-up around what does that actually mean for Tini, Kotin, Soalos, Busi, so whatever the case may be, go for it. Cool. I think, yes, Sogezo does come from that background, but it's also a background that recognizes that South Africa has a big, big, or more very difficult past to, to, to overcome. And that past, that past doesn't allow us to go into the capitalist mode of, of an economic model, merely where the markets run free and you can, you get business to dictate to us how things must work. I think we do need business and rightfully said, we have to create the regulatory framework that allows for business to thrive, to create jobs, but not without holding them accountable for their responsibility to society and to building and making sure that the most vulnerable in society are catered for, which therefore is why the role of the state is to ensure that we keep the, the, the most vulnerable in society protected and lift them out of that. And so social security also features in that. It's part and parcel of how we think that those who don't have uh, need to be given the support so that they can start living a life of dignity and a life that that they can feel happy and and, and full of, and their well-being is respected and, and honored. I think the idea of an inclusive economy is great, but it has to be with a, a, a government that works. We need proper government, a proper governance, and therefore changing the leadership is part and parcel of that process. Um, Raz has said consistently that uh, the first and foremost thing that we have to change is the leadership of this country. If we don't change the leadership and get the systems working, get the state or ent enterprises working, we're not going to see fundamental shift in how in any economic growth. Um, I think the, whether it's Tinsualo's little bit of access that we've had in the 30 years is by the way, because the quality of life like you said, has deteriorated. There are no jobs for young people. And for us to fix that, we need to fix state and entities and get the best to lead so that there's a proper system in place for m multiple more organizations to come into the, into the, into the fold. So I'm going to ask uh, this question, Sianda, about coalitions. Um, and the question is, in this multi-party charter, there are some parties that have said that they are willing to go into coalition with the ANC. For instance, Helen Zilla, there was a voice recording which was circulated where she said that they are comfortable going into a coalition with ANC so long as it is Cyril Ramaphosa-led ANC. So in your um, you know, arguments earlier, you, you pointed out that the multi-charter uh, coalition identifies the problem, or even before going to the multi-charter -charter coalition, the problem that you've identified as Action SA is the ANC. So does that not create a tension between your existence in um, the multi-charter you know, uh, party space when some of the people in that space have said that they're open to going into coalition with the ANC or at the very least have not outright ruled it out? 
Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think the first thing that we need to do is appreciate that the constitution makes provision of coalition. Coalitions are perfectly normal. The constitution actually encourages co uh, coalitions if you read it properly. Our first government in 94 to 99 was a coalition government, in, in fact. And we've had coalition government in the city of Cape Town from 2006, um, when um, the then Helen Zillow was executive mayor. Um, we remain an independent party within a coalition bloc. Uh, we remain a party that has its own stance on many issues. And one of the stance is um, being um, anti-ANC and identifying them as a problem. And we, we know that the DA has, has been touting and flirting um, um, the prospect of forming a coalition government with the ANC. And that is why a few months ago, um, members of the multi-party charter um, called the DA out to sign a contract um, to bind them not to form any coalitions with the ANC. And obviously they remain an independent party and, and if they decide to go against their word, the electorate will have them at that. Um, because South Africans are, are tired of an ANC. But they'll only know after the fact. Yep. You only know after you voted who's really honest about pieces of paper that they signed which don't have legal authority. How will you deal with that if they actually say, ah, it's Nandava, we're signing with ANC? Sure, and, and that's the point. Um, principles of parties need to come out. Um, you know, your moral standing as a party needs to come out, your value system as a party. That is why we're seeing the decline of the DA, in fact because they've gone against their word. I mean, it was the DA that kicked out Herman Mashaba in Johannesburg. It was the DA that plotted um, to um, to unseat um, the multi-party coalition in the city of Ekuruleni, you know? So we remain a party. We are very critical of the DA. We are, we are, we disagree on a number of, 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 of issues. I'm a councillor in Ekuruleni. We disagree fundamentally with the DA. We actually left the coalition in Ekuruleni after we, we disagreed fundamentally with the DA. We're currently disagreeing with the DA right now in the city of Tswane. Um, so we hold parties accountable, we're principled parties and we have a value system. If the DA decides to go against their word, it's up to them and the electorate that will face them. And that's why they're declining as a party. All right. OK, so the coalition question also comes back to you. You've pointed out that, um, you know, Action SA has contributed to coalitions which you viewed as having created problems in Tswane, in Johannesburg South, and you don't think that they've been capable of uh, managing the, their coalition relationships. We'll, we'll, we'll still explore that if there's time because you'll have a chance to respond. But I want to find out from Raiz Mzansi, how will you deal with this new electoral environment at the point at which ANC does not get um, a 50% uh, you know, number and you have to enter into a coalition deal with other players who may have differing views with your party on social justice, on um, equality, and even on identities such as the queer communities. Yeah. I'm going to start by saying the reality is coalitions are here for as many a cycles for the near future. And it's a reality we have to fast grapple with. But it's not a reality that must be decided by parties on a boardroom table. The people of this country have to decide how they want parties to interact and force a particular form of change that we need to legislate for and start changing um, so that the system can be geared up to um, any parties who want to go into coalition, there's agreements and they are binding by law. Unfortunately, as you're seeing, is that in a Kuruleni, this thing broke. But now nationally, the thing is gone together and other municipalities, something is collapsing. And this is causing the distrust and further distrust of the voter and the South African citizen who thinks that, you know, politicians are just doing what they do best and their fighting is causing chaos for my service delivery. This is a problem. And I think, again, it's not the ANC that must merely be called out. The ANC is a problem, but the problem is changing a political culture in this country that has left the ANC to do what it does, but has also meant that the establishment and other parties have forced themselves into this culture that um, it, it can be decided by themselves alone. We need to reinvigorate and reset democracy so that it works for all the citizens and that citizens have more power to act. So part of that answering that question is to say, we've already adopted a constituency mix model within our own um, framing, and we're hoping to keep pushing this once we're in parliament and the various legislatures to ensure that there's a more form, a bigger form of direct democracy that allows for people to say, 
to, to directly hold accountable their councillors, their uh, members of parliament, etc. Because part of what people tell us is that we, we have to now tell the party to act on behalf of us to, to hold someone accountable for not doing their job. This is what we need more of instead of the, in, uh, the, the chaos that's erupting across municipalities. All right, thanks, thanks. Now I'm gonna ask you a specific question and it's a two, two pronged question. Number one, how will your party create jobs, be specific, uh, particularly for the youth between the ages of 15 to 30, 34, even though I don't think 34 year old should be called youth, but nonetheless, it is what it is. And number two, how will you find small businesses, particularly black owned small businesses? What will you do? How, what laws and policies will you change to be able to effect that at the national level? Sure. So one of the things that we have identified is Action SA, and we're currently running an, a campaign on economic prosperity right now in the month of November. And we are going out to all communities um, trying to find out what exactly is the problem. And one of the issues that we have identified is that um, we used to have economic zones in our communities. Um, in the then homelands, which were rather historically problematic. But what the apartheid government did is that they created economic zones for our people, where people could find work, where people could find jobs. But the problem with South Africa, and particularly the youth, is that we, we have a, a skill mismatch. Um, we need to skill the youth. We need to give them the right skills to be equipped for a good economy. We also need to inspire a culture of entrepreneurship in, um, in our communities, particularly our youth. We also need to change legislation. One of the most problematic things that South Africa has and businesses always approach us and inform us is that it is difficult to establish business in South Africa because of our dra draconian laws that we have, laws that are anti-economic prosperity, laws that do not allow businesses to come and set up shop and, and offer jobs. So we are saying as Action SA that um, if you have a youth um, centered on specific skills for a specific market and demands, then we will move forward. And we're also saying that specific laws, we have laws such as the small scale um, act that was passed recently, it makes no sense. We also have laws um, which, which have been passed, um, which prevent businesses um, to directly engage with local government um, 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 entities. Um, you have to go to Pretoria to launch um, an application or a permit to start a business, for instance, in the city of Tuan, as opposed to directly approaching the city of Tuan to establish a business. So some those are some of the legislation that we have identified. Legislation is a barrier for starting business. Legislation is an economic um, a barrier. We're also saying that youth must be given with the right skills to champion the right jobs. Hmm. Now over to you, same question. How will you create jobs for South Africans? and try to be as specific as you can. And also, how will you create financing opportunities uh, for small business owners? And I think I wanna just put it out there so that um, the whole South Africa knows. Um, the 2019 World Economic Forum um, Global Competitiveness Index ranked the South African banking system in the top 20. But when it came to the financing of small to medium enterprises, the ranking of South Africa was at 96. So that's a very significant gap. And when it comes to venture capital availability, the ranking of South Africa was 77. So if South Africa is top 20 in terms of financial system, but 96 and 77, that indicates that there's a serious um, challenge mm. with managing how small businesses are funded and you cannot create any version of a startup entrepreneurial environment mm -hmm. while you are basically at the bottom of the table in financing so i'm curious what you think and you will still have an opportunity because you'll have closing uh, statements as well but if we are talking about job creation as one of the big things and also that small businesses are one of the big things how do you achieve that as rising zansi firstly i want to start by saying in order for us to solve that also, we need to change the conditions on the ground. It's hard for a young person to open up a small business when they are forced by organized criminals to actually um, pay additional money. And then you have issues of ESCOM where there's no electricity to actually get the business functioning. So we've set out the priority to fix Transnet and ESCOM. And yes, I'll leave that aside for now. But again, one of the key things is Capital, you've mentioned it already. RISE believes that we need to, pro not just for youth, for black women as well, who are equally excluded from this economy, to give them capital to start businesses and promote um, entrepreneurship, but also promote innovation. 
it's not enough to just have a small business. We need to think bigger and, and bolder around how, what can we produce that we can sell abroad and, and start getting global economies buying what we have to offer. A few key industries that we're going to be thinking and, and really hard on producing a lot of these, these, these plans on is the green industries, tourism, the creative economy, cannabis and hemp, and manufacturing of goods. These are areas where young people are interested in and invested in. And we've already started developing our, our, our creative sector um, by our creative sector artists by giving them more opportunities, by harnessing their skills and promoting them on, on platforms that we, that we have. I want to say that the big challenge in South Africa is that a million young people, uh, or at least let me phrase it this way, we want to upskill a million young people because the big challenge is that most of young people don't have a metric. And if you don't have a metric, stats show that you will actually be less likely to get a job. This is youth capital stats. This is stats from global uh, economic forums that speak about the fact that if you don't have a skill, you can't work and you're very unlikely to get economic opportunities or even some form of, of, of work. And therefore, a million job opportunities is what we are offering as part of upskilling a young person who needs some form of, of, of um, professional uh, capacity, artisanship, their creative skills and so on that will help us get young people working. All right, let's move now to the question of putting South Africans first. What does that mean for um, Action SA? And what policy reforms will you make different to what is being proposed by the ANC currently? Because there's an immigration uh, white paper that already exists. So. What is the Action SA position? What does this mean? And I think in addition to that, you did say that, um, you know, Herman Mashaba is not being populist and this is a legitimate issue, immigration. But there are concerns globally around the rise of leaders who have used immigration almost as um, a tool to try to use that sentiment against, uh, you know, foreign nationals as a political tool to rise to power. And some of them have had xenophobic attitudes towards those audiences. What do you say in response to those concerns? But fundamentally, what does it mean to, because there's so many people who say they want to put South Africans first. What does it mean from Action SA's perspective? Sure, yeah, I think, I think the first thing we, we need to accept all is that illegal immigration is a problem, number one. Um, and that it is um, contributing to a number of issues and social ills that we have in society. Um, and um, we're not going to say that um, illegal foreigners um, are the problem. Illegal immigration is a problem, and this is very important. Um, Home Affairs has neglected its um, mandate to regulate uh, who comes in who leaves the country. Our um, army, South African National Defense Force, has neglected that duty. Our South African Police Service, we of the view that it shouldn't be a service, by the way, it should be a South African police force, has neglected its duty and mandate to police um, who's in the country. Uh, we are of the view that, um, you know, illegal immigration um, is, is systematic in South Africa and the sham white paper that Home Affairs, um, we actually went to the Home Affairs, we marched to the Home Affairs um, um, head office in Tswane, where we said, um, this says nothing about South Africans, you know, and the ANC is obviously being, um, it, you know, it's countering what, whatever is, um, is countering because it's eating their ground. But illegal immigration is a problem. And we see it on a daily basis when we have conversations with normal South Africans. It is not a populist stance. It is reality. But, but we've done an episode on immigration and um, we looked at that paper and it does discuss changing uh, naturalization. It does discuss, um, you know, re renegotiating the Refugee Act and strengthening the powers that the South African government would have. How is your proposition different? Or are you saying that they're being opportunistic because Action SA has also been speaking about immigration? No, certainly. I mean, Herman Mashaba was made Mr. Evil Man. I mean, at some point, he was called Little Trump when he was mayor of Johannesburg. Every time a building in Johannesburg catches fire, Herman Mashaba is being vindicated and his administration is being vindicated. And Action SA is also being vindicated because we've been saying for, for a number of years now that illegal immigration is, is systematic. It is a problem. It is a reality. We see it. Foreign spaza shops killing children on a daily basis. Those These are not South African-run spaza shops, by the way. It is foreign-owned um, spaza shops that are killing our South African children. 
We're also seeing uh, South African children being without a place in schools and foreign kids miraculously have um, spots in schools. Small businesses, my grandfather used to own shops in Tembisa. Um, he was a black industrialist in township Tembisa and was very successful. That space has been taken up by illegal foreign um, syndicates. And there are syndicates. We, we have proof of this. We've opened cases and we, we were waiting for the ACPS to do something about it. But because they're working with the South African Police Service, nothing has been done. So we, we are of the view that um, this government has neglected South Africans, this government is anti-South African, and that Action SA is here that the agenda should be South Africans first and everything and everyone across the world. We don't care from the Middle East to the Americas to the Europe, South Africans first and South Africans um, and, and, and everybody later. The agenda must be South Africans. And once you have a pro-South African government, you will have a patriotic um, citizenry, you'll have nationalists who want to make this country better. You'll start seeing people not littering. Small things, you start people because, taking because care. Because the illegal immigrants are gone. Oh, no, no, no. Not because illegal immigrants are gone, but because you're creating a proud nation. You're creating a pro-South African nation. You're creating, so it won't be um, um, uh, together forever rugby stances that we have. It will be real, you know. And and it, it, has, it, it it's not about just the illegal immigration. Illegal immigration is systematic. It brings birth to other social ills in society, not only illegal immigration. Got it. Yeah. So I'm um, going to bring the question to you as well. There has been a large number of um, immigrants coming from countries such as Zimbabwe, such as Mozambique. And if we look at the census data, I think the numbers of Zimbabwe nationals in 2001 to 2011 to 2022 has increased to a point where there are over 2 million Zimbabweans now living in South Africa. That's and Zimbabwe and Mozambique um, make the top two countries which have had an influx into South Africa. Immigration, especially undocumented and illegal immigration, does have a bearing on social services, healthcare, policing. What is the Rise Mzansi position on the issue of immigration? How will you deal with it? And um, how are you different in the way you are proposing to deal with it from Action SA, from uh, the, the ANC government as well? Because there is a white paper right now that exists and there are different uh, people proposing different things. So what about your solution is a preferable avenue? I also think there are multiple solutions to this because the Zimbabwean crisis in their own country with the way government's going there has caused this influx as well. If things were good there, if things were, were, were stable, if you had a government that was in service uh, to its people, you wouldn't have this much of influx. So again, it's not just one solution, it's multiple, because on a foreign affairs level, you need to actually put the pressure on that government to say, you need to do what you need to do to fix what you do, you fix your systems, your healthcare and police, whatever, whatever. But immigration is not the immigrant who is the problem per se in this conversation. And I think that's a worry that I have where Action SA for many years had started off with. And you saw a rise of xenophobic tension across this country. It's well documented, part of not just the Action SAs, but the PAs and all the other parties who fuel the fire of this, rather than saying immigration. You're only hearing immigration now in the last few years because the language had to change, because they were rightfully called out for it. Immigration management is this challenge. We have a bo bo porous borders, we have a, a minister and, and, and a department that is dysfunctional. You can buy an ID, you can buy a passport. These are things that shouldn't be the case. The only way you do that is if you fix the governance model, not just within home affairs, but in the police. You need to make sure the police are also geared up. You need to make sure local government is geared up because again, there's bylaws enforcement that need to happen. So RISE is taking a holistic approach that says you can't just identify the illegal foreigner is the problem here because we believe in human rights. We believe even that person is a vulnerable person and, and we need to deal with that reality. We think for us to manage this process and this problem is getting those departments working, which is why we lead with the leadership and governance question as the first thing in our manifesto that says, unless you fix that, you're going to continuously having these conversations that don't address the problem. I mean, it's ridiculous to think that you're going to get this patriotic feel for South Africans from an immigration policy. That comes with engagement of, of a nation building program that cuts across society, it involves sports, arts, culture. 
this idea that we must put essay first is not the necessarily the one that deals with the complexity involved in this question. So again, reducing irregular, irregular immigration, the ease of entry also of skilled workers. South Africa does need skills. We need capacity. We need to also create a welcoming environment in that investors from all around the world are interested to come here and work here and provide their their, their skill and services to help our industry start growing, Um, which also by and large increases um, the creativity, increases the investment in tourism. All those things happen when you have a functional government and you have a functional government that can deliver um, a, 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 a immigration system that does foreground safety and security, but that also creates conditions that welcome people to, to our country. All right. So we're going to do a bonus question. I was supposed to just do five. But this one is such an important question that I think it's, it's important for voters to consider. And it's going to put you, it's a tough question. So just brace yourself. <laughs> people ask about party donors. And Action SA has received some donations from billionaires in South Africa, from very prominent families, such as the Oppenheimers. There's a free, received money from Martin Moshal, who's a, who's a gaming billionaire. What influence does your funding have on your party policies, preferences, and choices? And how can South Africans trust that if they give you the vote, that when you are in government, you will take their opinions over the opinions of the people who put you in power and will be able to fund you moving forward. It also relates to the global concern about the hijacking of democracy Mm -hmm. by powerful elites who can fund political parties. And I'm sure you've heard those concerns. They may seem like they only matter, to people in Santon, but I do think that even Spusiso cares mm-hmm. that if I wear this t-shirt and I put up posters and I risk my life, how do I know that my vote is actually going to be listened to once you are in power? Sure. I think with a party funding, with the party funding act, um, Action SA is not represented in parliament, but we are a fully registered um, political party and we rightly, as per the law dictates, declared our, our donors and our funders and um, we've made it clear from the first time the act became the law of parliament we declared our funders and we've been very transparent with that um and and i think secondly what we also need to um to submit is that there's nothing wrong with receiving funding and and funders Um, people who have money people who have spare change will fund political parties because they like the political party they like the policies they like the values maybe they like the leader um, interesting enough, one of our biggest funders is the leader of Action SA himself, Herman Mashaba, who's a well-established businessman um, funding um, Action SA itself. But but most uh, um, another issue with party funding is that we also get funding from normal South Africans. Um, your 10 rand here, your 20 rand there. My grandfather funds the party a thousand rand every month, for instance. We also have local businesses that fund um, um, Action SA. Say, look, I like your party, I like your policies, I like your values. I will contribute to Action SA. But it is also very important to to accept and admit that um, major political funders will want to influence policy direction. Major political funders will want to influence the direction of the party itself. And Action SA has been um, one of the a few parties that have lost um, funders and sponsors because we were adamant in some of our values and principles that we did not want to bend over for. Um, You will note that there was a a political party established, I will not mention names, where we lost funding out and the the funder now started funding this new political party because we are now, we declare that we're contesting all nine provinces. They would have wanted us not to contest the Western Cape but we are saying we are Action SA and we're going to contest the Western Cape. So that is an example where Action SA did not bend over for funders and and and, and sponsors, and we were um, um, st- stuck on our principles and our values as a party. This question goes back to you as well. I mean, um, Rise Mzansi has also declared its funding, and finally, <laughs> we we also saw that billionaires have predominantly. Uh, made the contributions in the quarter that was published. And there may be, as, as, as we get closer to election, other billionaires who think that um, their money is best spent on um, Rise of Zanzi. 
What do you say to the concerns about the billionaire funding and about the concerns about the party independence and who the party will serve once in power? And I think there is a little bit of crossover, you know, uh, between your guys' donors. So the question then becomes, are the, are the, is the public not being played? Because they listen to this debate, they pick one of the two of you, but at the end of the day, uh, the same people are making the calls to both of your leaders. Mm. How do you deal with that concern? It's a concern that, that speaks, I think, to the challenge in South African political funding. It's not your guys' fault that there's not a lot of funding systems, mm. but at the same time, because there are so few people with so much money that they can share and, and use as disposable income, this concern then arises to say, there's 10 people who are funding everybody. How do I know that my voice and my vote will count after I give it to this entity? I think I agree fully with what you're saying. We need to have a broader conversation in South Africa about how the party funding is done. And I think it impacts on all parties, including Action SA and ourselves, because we unfortunately aren't in, aren't in parliament. We don't get money from that democracy fund. And therefore, we need to showcase it and still get enough to do the work. We quite certain and, and can, can, can confidently say that no funder dictates to us what is it we need to be doing. Um, in fact, as a leadership, we constantly have to reckon with the fact that we've built a movement now and that even if Irfan leaves or something happens, the movement will continue regardless of who. Even if a funder leaves, the thing will continue to at least exist uh, and, and, and that's a result of being a movement style political party. I think we wanted to be transparent about funding and that's why you've seen this, the statement come from us. We've also had an internal statement thanking the particularly small donations because are th we also a project of that person. Are we also a, 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 a dictated to by that person? The reality is this has been produced. This people's manifesto, and this is what we stick by. It includes our values, it includes what we intend to do. People decide based on that if they agree with it and if they want to invest in that process. And that's what we currently are grappling with, is that the, if you believe in this, you need to help fund it and resource it because democracy is expensive. To get posters up, to pay for fuel, to pay for travel, um, airtime, things are costly and therefore it requires support. And we encourage as many South Africans to get involved and support, uh, if not just us alone, if you believe in another party's message, do what you can to support it. There's no funder who dictates. And again, we also have rejected a very, very big amount of money um, on the basis that funders wanted us to shift our positions that is included in this on, on multiple issues. And we have rejected it because we stick to principle. We agree that the principles must, must lead us. And until we fix the bigger problem around party funding, we're not going to solve the, the influence or at least the contributions from those big donors. In fact, we must encourage them to give more because these big donors have a responsibility to use their money towards social transformation in this country. And they must find who can actually carry that message. And I thank Rebecca Oppenheimer for doing that in our case. All right, so um, I'm gonna let you give the closing statements because you went first so that you can have the last word. So our closing statements are gonna be two minutes. Um, just give your final reflections based on the discussion here and what you want to be your last word that South Africans ought to consider as they are considering Rai Zanzi and other political parties. We are tired. Um, we are tired of being lied to, to being treated, mistreated, to being show, showcased as, as South African citizens who don't deserve care, who don't deserve a life of dignity and well-being. And I think RISE em has emerged with a politics of care and of well-being to center the South African story on a different path. We think that we, it is possible to build a South Africa that is safe, prosperous, equal, and united in one generation. And it's going to take all of us, my brother on the other side, yourself, all of us who have different roles to play in society to get there. There's no silver bullet, but it requires us to engage democracy and be participating at all levels constantly. RISE wants to break away from the old, and that's why we aren't a breakaway party. We've not come with the baggage of old. We recognize the past as an important thing that, that we have to reckon with. 
But we have to be here to build the future. And the only way we build the future is if we get in the mix, we get in the ring and, and deal with all the complexity and nuance that exists. It's not going to be an easy road, but we have to make this election one that sets us on a trajectory of change. Um, that change must start from what are we willing to do to solve the problems that exist in our community and back the type of movement and party that we think aligns with our values and our mission. It is possible in one generation. And I think um, I really want to encourage those watching because I know it's a youthful audience that our time is now. If we do nothing, then it's our fault. Well, thank you. Thank you. Over to you, Sianda. Yeah, well, Action SA has provided the solutions. We have the values. We have the right people to take uh, South Africa forward. Um, we are of the view that Action SA is, is the right platform and is ready to govern South Africa. Um, we are also um, saying look at the experiences that we have in local government where we've been. Um, we've uh, been in governments in three metros. We have been in government in two local municipalities in KZN. And where we are involved, where the Action SA is part and parcel of, um, people remain cent uh, center of, of the conversation. Action SA is also saying that we will put you forward. You'll be top of the agenda. Um, we, we are considered in the multi-charter coalition as a very um, an annoying party. And that's because we, we are providing fresh new ideas. And we are saying um, this is how things can be done. This is the solution to bring um, things forward. We have also identified um, the key problem areas in South Africa, and we are uh, putting forward turnaround strategy. And so we are also saying um, um, as Action SA that um, definitely the youth, this is your time to make it work. This is your time to contribute to society. And that is why we've been out voter registration, encouraging people vote on voter registration campaigns, encouraging the young people to take arms. Um, we we um, occupy a very important um, uh, sector in society. And therefore, this is our time to, to turn around things uh, for future generations. Um, we will look back into 2024 one day and say that we were part of the generation that turned things around for a better South Africa. Well, there you have it. There you have it. I hope this helps you think through all of the issues. I'd like to thank all the participants in the debate from Rise Mzansi, from Action SA. I think it's critical and crucial that we have these conversations, and I hope we can have more, because even though we try to cover as much as we could, there are time constraints. So thank you so much. Spread the fire. Feed the mind. Thank you for watching this debate. If you made it to the end, you are a great thinker. You are exactly who we're targeting. So comment, tell us what you thought about the different parties. I'm sure they're going to be reading all of the comments, all of the replies. Share this video, contribute. Let's strengthen the platform so that we can continue to have these great debates about one of the greatest moments in South African history, the 2024 election.